Ladies and gentlemen, I shall start with a quote that was brought to me by a gentleman I had dinner with last night with an epigraph. Nemo me impune lacessit. No one attacks me with impunity, which was the Latin motto of the royal house, the royal Stuart dynasty of Scotland from the reign of James VI. And the other one is an epigraph that I always start with any talk I give nowadays, especially in a search for America's new manifest destiny. The jungles are not approaching our cities and the barbarians are not at the gates. The jungles have become our cities. The barbarians, well healed in dresses, suits and ties, are inside our cities. Whether we call them woke supremacists, critical race theorists, cancer culture enforcers, Black Lives Matters practitioners, Antifa, avowed about abolish, abolish of our constitution, destroyers of the First Amendment, this consecrated sacred house that is America and her chosen people are under attack by these civilizational terrorists. An offensive war has been declared against America and her unprecedented civilization. And all the traditional means of adjudicating disputes and truth claims, reason, logic, an appeal to empirical evidence, an appeal to objective reality, have been criminalized as a construct of racist European imperialists. They have disarmed peaceful means of resolution to say nothing of reconciliation. I think when in a war, one is under a moral obligation by the law of nature that arms or that aims for self-preservation to obliterate the enemy. And I think that one could further add that a bonus of war is to inflict generational damage against those who have infernal impertinence to attack us. The fight to this war and to win this war is not just to invoke a new McCarthyism, which will make the old McCarthyism look like kindergarten play. It is to devise a new American manifest destiny because America has lost its American mind. And it is infected by a series, a set of ideopathogens from which we have no inoculants. I'm not talking about the 19th century doctrine or belief that the expansion of the US throughout the American continent was both justifiable and inevitable. I'm talking about a new ethos, a new set of principles, and an orientation that will ameliorate and then inexorably rectify the current crisis that we are facing. The crisis of the United States consists in the United States having become uncertain of its purpose at home and abroad having become uncertain of its moral meaning, its ethical telos, the mandates of its second chosen people who were called to fulfill its moral mission of civilizing the world at large. Part of the problem lies in the idea pathogens against which we have ceased to inoculate ourselves against, but that's time for another talk. There is a frontier anxiety that we face. All of us, I think, in this great republic, this unprecedented republic of ours, were built for enormity. To suffuse our nation with an original assemblage of who we are as people, and to stop gap the frontier anxiety that we feel at this moment when it seems that all frontiers are foreclosed to us, both physically, existentially, morally, and personally, we need a new manifest destiny. And the question is not, do we need a new manifest destiny? The question is, what will happen if we don't orient ourselves to a new one? We will not be left alone. We will get engulfed in the manifest destiny of other nations. China's manifest destiny is twofold. It is to economically annex, I think, a third of the globe, to suffuse the world implicitly with spiritual and moral bankruptcy of a kind of spiritual emptiness that believes in selling the idea that man can live alone by consumption and to implicitly suffuse the world with an ideology of communism. Iran, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia, the three largest state sponsors of Islamic jihadism and terrorism, 
They have their own manifest destiny. Hamas has its own manifest destiny of establishing a global caliphate and eliminating Jewry and Jews from the world. And Russia, as we know, has a manifest destiny of toying with elected democracies across the world. So to begin the outlines of a new manifest destiny, I want to discuss very briefly two vectors which our manifest destiny must proceed, that which we must eliminate and that which we must cultivate. If we're talking about all the muck that is going to be erected after a transracial world has, has been established, I think this is necessary. I believe that we must begin to fight the battle comprehensively and stop fighting this battle piecemeal we must become wholesalers and achieve a militaristic economy in our culture, cultural war, which means we stop going after the enemy like worker bees. We stop fighting these worker bees and we go after the hives. And we know where the hives are. The national security threat producing the enemies of the state, these annoying little worker bees that we're swatting, are the universities. They are producing the Americophobia and they're destroying American civilization. The greatest national threat to our, unit, to our system, to our great country, are the universities. They have become bastions, not of learning, but bastions of indoctrination, whose sole purpose is to promote systemic nihilism and the destruction of values that are foundational to this country. They cancel human agency and then history and then the codified record of our foundational values and principles that are inoculants against destruction and the preconditions for growth and flourishing, all for the sake of ushering in a new world order, an anti-civilizational order, an anti-industrial Marxist communist order. If you want to know where the climate change eco-fascists who want to drag us back to primordial jungle swamps where we are competing with tsetse flies and man-eating tigers get their philosophy from, look to their postmodern activistic professors. If you want to see where the Marxist trained Black Lives Matters and critical race theory woke activists, trained activists who vowed to break up US banks, advocate the destruction of sacred Israel, destroy the nuclear family and advance an agenda of diversity, equity and inclusion, which is an acronym for inverse racism, get their intellectual poison from, look to the American hating professorate. Their surrogates, the National Education Association, endorses the teaching of critical race theory in 14,000 public schools, along with an anti judeo christian agenda advanced by ethnic studies programs in California, and advocates returning stolen lands to indigenous peoples and forced children to worship and pray homage to Aztec gods. You need to look to the professors of these departments. These creatures are not open to reason and logic, as I've said, because force and violence are their stated preferred means of fighting, and they must be met with force. And what do I mean by this? I mean expulsion, employment termination, since the left has taken it as their job to, through cancel culture to ruin the careers and to ruin the lives of innocent people. Then we must invoke the New Old Testament God and avenge ourselves against their transgression. We must begin the process of denaturalizing, denaturalizing the citizenship of our enemies who come to this country because immigration is not, speaking as an immigrant, immigration is not a right, it is a privilege. We must begin this process of employment termination of public servants who are producing enemies of the state and who act as enemies of the state as part of our manifest destiny. What must we cultivate? Well, let me debunk one damn shibboleth before moving on. There was no genocide in this country and there was no stolen land. Simply put, there was a war for resources and the Native Americans came in second. They simply lost the war. On June 22, 1924, Congress passed an Indian Citizenship Act which granted citizenship to all Native Americans born in the United States of America. The American Indians stole the continent from the Holocene megafauna and slaughtered them into extin extinction. In a war for resources, this country fought a war and won it. We must first cultivate the political emotions of patriotic love of country, along with a new understanding of the civic virtues 
And in some way, just as how the left has systematically taught our young to hate this country and its unprecedented civilization, we must cultivate a new ethos by re-ratifying our social contract we live by. We must outline the moral meaning of the United States of America, its exceptional nature, why it is an unprecedented phenomenon in a non-apologetic way. We must begin the process, process of re-covenanting ourselves as a chosen country and admit that we are a different iteration of a chosen people in a new chosen country destined to lead internally and abroad. Here I will part from my paleo conservatives uh, compatriots. America is not an NGO. In the global anarchical commons, there must be an alpha leader, a supreme one to whom others will follow by moral example. Uh, I will say that there was a time when the mention of the name USA, I remember as a child growing up in Jamaica when the mention of the word USA induced an emotion of both admiration, fear, and love. One pinned one's aspirational identity on America. At the age of seven, I decided I wanted to become an American, left Jamaica at 20, and became an American at around the age of 30. The world feared and loved America. And some ghastly phenomenon who called himself the President of the United States of America a couple years ago went on an apology tour in Cairo, beginning in Cairo, I think, and talked about uh, apologizing for American exceptionalism, leading from behind, and soft power. We have never recovered since then. Each American must feel that he or she can manifest his, manifest, his or her manifest destiny in this great nation and not feel stifled by political correctness and also by the moral agenda of lesser people. We must vet those who seek to be part of our cultural uh, culture. Part of the problem of liberal, liberal, liberalism <laughs> is that it lets everyone into the future. It is both the greatness and the weakness of liberalism. And unfortunately, not everyone can be let into the future. We cannot let social ballasts, we cannot let ignoble junk into this country. We have to engage on a more thorough and ruthless vetting process, and some people will be left outside the realm of the future. In closing, I was re-watching a part of The Crown in which Queen Mary said something to Queen Elizabeth about the role of monarchy. And I will twist a little bit on what she said and say it in the spirit of what I think is America's role in terms of cultivating a new manifest destiny. America is God's sacred mission to grace and dignify the earth, to give ordinary people an ideal to strive towards, an example of nobility and duty to raise them in their humble lives. And to live as a patriotic American is a vocational calling from God. Thank you.